Hey, hey, everybody out there on the internet, it's your old pal John, and I just, and I just dug out through my filing cabinet a bunch of s stuff that I was working on and just stuff I just threw away and just forgot about. First off, um, first off I have are some monsters, um, that I started like a, I started like a, the Draconians uh, from a Dragonlance, because pretty much I, I like dra as you may or may not be aware, is I like Dragonlance. If you know the books I have over there on my shelf for any consolation, the one I just I saw the stats for the Draconians in Fourth Edition in one of the books, and I just didn't like them. Like, these aren't Draconians. So basically. I have their height, they're five, five foot eight, weigh about 210 pounds. Their appearance are rep reptile scaly, their alignment is lawful evil. And they, they have a shameful curse, which is the whole, when you hit them with a mundane melee weapon, they turn to stone. For 1d4 rounds. They have fire breath, which I beefed up actually. It's, Plus 17 versus Fortitude, hit 3d6 plus 5 fire damage, plus target, and the target is knocked prone. So, those are your Draconian Knights. Another one was one of my more obscure ones, and it was Gold Golems. Yes, Gold Golems, because I don't think this has ever been done in D&D. And the Strength 22, Constitution 21. Dexterity 20, Intelligence 3, Wisdom 3, uh, Charisma 3, which I'm pretty sure I just took these off basic column stats. Uh, they have 113 hit points. Their bloody value is 56, which is half their hit points. Uh, resistance 10 cold, vulnerability 5 fire. They have golden fists. Which they can hit their targets that does 2d6 plus 8 damage. Um, they have a golden bondage... Bondage? Yeah, no, the, yeah, nope, that's bondage. I wrote bondage, right? I think I did. Bum, bye. Get yourself backwards, probably, for you guys. But yeah, an enemy, uh, it, it's an aura 1. I can get into that later with a 4th edition review. But, um... An enemy creature that starts its turn adjacent to the gold golem makes an immediate save, and if it fails, then gold, then gold leg, iron. F oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It, it basically immobilizes the person who's next to the golem. Like the golem just goes like bam, and now the the target. The, like the, the adventurer can't move, like his feet kind of get sunk in the gold, like cinder blocks type things. Yeah, and if the gold golem moves or anything happens to the person, uh, that they're they're freed, but because it's an aura. But anyway, I have a. I have a description slash background. I have a I have a background for this creature. The gold golems are the product of the dwarven kings of, of, of yesteryear who enchanted their treasure to form into a humanoid-like golem to protect their treasure for, from certain invading monsters who want to take it. <laughs> oh, this is, how, this is how crazy I am into dragon lines. Uh, the gold golems, we... Uh, sort back to their treasure. The, the golems go back to their. And this is a history check, D DC thirty five. The goal. The golems resort back to their treasure form when the special command word is uttered. Zok Tes Tesroth. <laughs> anybody from anybody from the trailers knows where I got that from. My God. Weird. Anyway, next on um, monsters slash screwing with my players, I have a story for you about um, something's blinking on my camera. Uh, the story is, it was the same encounter when I had my play. It was the same night when I had my players fight 
the grass, the killer grass. You know, the whole save versus grass thing. You know, hilarious. I had them go, they went to this dungeon. You know, and they went deep into it. And they entered a room. I don't know, I don't know if I told this, but they entered a room and it had a... It had a beautiful woman in it. And... Immediately I, I said to them, and, and I described to her the woman, that she's all this, she's this beautiful, lovely woman, you know, big, big breasts, you know, lovely legs, long hair, long flowing hair. I had the players roll a d20. And all but one, all but one, succeeded. And the one who succeeded was enamored, enamored by this person. Like almost, I want to you know, I want to stay here forever with them. So, okay. you may be thinking, it's not what you're thinking. It's not a succubus encounter. It's not. Because people who succeeded on their save saw Mistra, hag of the far realm. And she's not a succubus. She's just a witch who was cursed to be like that. So, Kind of like, more, it's more like a Medusa type thing. Only she enchants people and she, you know, sucks. So it was really fun role playing and really, I got my guys to role play, I got them to combat. It was fun. It's fun, especially, you know, when the players wanted to attack Mistra and the one who was under her spell, you know, stepped in between. It's cool. Um, yeah. It was cool, and I threw that, and she's. She's beautiful. She's probably going to hang on my wall soon. I'm just going to show her disgusting faces again. And yes, that is the symbol of the Codex from Ultima on her forehead. Don't ask me why. I just put it there. So yeah, she's in the far realm, chilling out. Yeah. Oh yeah, my players did defeat Mestra, but... Uh... But yeah, anyway, that's, um, that, I thought that was really interesting. Um, another thing I wanted to share, as I said in my last video, I was going to join with my father and a couple people, so, an AD, a first edition game, and I have, um, to balance up the party, we have, we're playing two characters. I have a Cavalier. Who, you know, a pawn, essentially. Who is, goes by the name that I use now for pretty much every paladin I play, who is Shemidor the Silver. Yes, Shemidor the Silver. Kick ass name ever, and I should really get that trademarked. And I love him. I love it, because I've done everything. And then, the mage I have is Fizlanth Thalas. Or, you can call him Fizz. And I have some backstory for them, and I will share them for you. Oh, and if I put, and Fizz is, Shemador is a human, and Fizz is a deep gnome, or a silver blend, I don't know, it's in first edition theme folio. Show you. Um, right there. Right there? Yeah, right there. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Also, Shamador worships. Uh, no, no, no. Athena, great, great goddess. Bow strategy is lawful good. Anyway, sit down tight, guys. I'm gonna read you something. Again, Shamador, member of the order. Uh, this is the backstory for Sh Shamador, as you may have told. Shemador, member of the Order of the Silver Dragon, who has recently received the rank of Chevalier, which is a ninth level cavalier in AD&D, was granted the Gauntlets of Ogre Power as a symbol of his station. Young Shemador was traveling to the city of Mans Mansgrad to be in the garrison, because that's his assignment. I don't know. Ca I don't know. Cavaliers. <laughs> when he suddenly found himself rushed through or pushed through some type of magical gateway and arrived in 
in Faerun, where this game's going to be in Forgotten Realms. So, Faerun. And his goals are, he's trying to get home, trying to find out, or trying to find why he was sent here to Faerun, and also still keeping up his nightly duties. So yeah, that's Shemin. Now, Fizz. Fizzlanthalos, or Fizz, as he is called by many, is a, sylv uh, is a deep gnome who, due to his, his pursuit of perfecting his arcane talent, took the test, uh, once again, showing my dragon lance, my dragon lance fandom, to become a magic user. The test proven to be difficult. But the good old, but good old Fizz managed to pass with little harm to himself. Shortly after Fizz was granted his magic license, you know, per permission to, you have our permission to practice magic. Shortly after Fizz was granted his magic license, he stumbled across a cavalier named Shemador, who said he was on his a quest to bring honor and chivalry to the land, to the world. So Fizzlan Fizzlanthathos, see, I can't even say it. That's why his name is just Fizz. See, seeing a chance to show his newly found, his, new, his newly received power to the world, decided to travel with Shemador, and they have been together ever since. So yeah. That's the backstory for my new characters there. Um, I look forward to playing that. Um, also, I look forward to playing them on Saturday night, uh, tomorrow night. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Um, do I do, uh, yeah, um, my next video, uh, hopefully, I'm thinking of doing... How, uh, I'm probably going to do shit another video later to, later on because I'm really energetic and I got a lot of topics to talk about today which is cool anyway as always I'm John happy gaming see you in the next video and remember to please rate comment and subscribe <laughs>